Products often make their own brands, but branding can also make products. You can buy toys, pencil cases, smoothie makers and much more with characters like Disney princesses, Sesame Street or Minions. So what are manufacturers doing to thrive in an increasingly competitive world? Today I'm joined by Grant Gee, Commercial Director of toy manufacturer Sambro. I'm Selina Downs. Welcome to Great British Business. Grant Gee, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. What's the state of the industry at the moment? Uh, so the toy and game industry, specifically in the UK, um, is coming towards the end of the year from last year. So we're at about minus 3% in terms of value. Um, and then the units, the overall number of toys actually sold, is as low down as minus 9 versus the year before. So um, it's been a real shift change. There's been lots of exciting things happening. Uh, the rise of the fidget spinner and collectibles have definitely driven a lot of growth in the market. Um, and then also classic toy and games like board games is actually starting to uh, see some growth year on year. Um, it doesn't offset the overall decline of other categories, however. What do you put that down to? Well, do you know, I think there's a bit of a change. I think there's some screen off time. I think parents want to get it back around the table. I think that's with the board games. And then I also think the rise of social media and some of the profiling of how fun games can be again has really helped the resurgence in that particular category. OK, what have been uh, some of the major changes to your business uh, since its inception? So Sambra have done quite a dynamic change. We originally started buying and selling toys. So we would buy finished product and then we would sell it on, uh, definitely focused towards a discount channel. Um, and then over the last few years, we've been moving towards a manufacturing role and manufacturing under licensing. So we might take the license for Disney Frozen, for example, and then start to manufacture arts and crafts products. And that's kind of where we found ourselves today. So this has been a fantastic um, niche, I suppose, area of expertise um, for you. What have been some of the challenges you've had to overcome and how have you done those? Yeah, I think the challenges we've found in the last couple of years have definitely been through a bit of uncertainty. Uh, the Brexit announcement is going to cause a little bit of uncertainty going forward. The last couple of years we've had some challenges with Iberia and Benelux. You know, we're a, we're a global company, we're an international company. So um, some market challenges um, have caused a few issues. A couple of devaluations on at least two currencies in the last 12 months um, has caused us a little bit of a wobble. But generally, we're outperforming the market in terms of growth. So we're doing well. So that's all positive. But yes. how do you respond to some of the negative um, criticisms that you're targeting children with sophisticated marketing? So it's interesting, actually, for the last year, so the last 12 months, Samba have only just engaged in marketing. Because we're under license, um, a lot of our products based on those hit movies that those kids go and watch, whether it be Minions, or the latest Frozen or Disney um, property. Um, so we make products for that. But you know, the most recent campaign we might have run uh, was Sesame Street with Tickle Me Elmo, very successful toy for us. That was actually targeting parents. That's that again a... going back to the old school, isn't it? Yes, it's back. Yeah, it's changed hands a few times. Um, Elmo had a great um, Christmas, should we say. Um, but yes, the campaign was actually targeting parents in that instance because you know, they're the primary purchaser. And really the demand is really driven from the entertainment property like a movie and that's where the kids are really engaging with it. Yeah, sure. All right, so what um, then are your uh, bold predictions for the future? Where do you see the industry headed? So I think collectibles will continue to be a rise. I think there'll always be a fad. There'll always be a trend that surprises us. Uh, they're hard to predict. But the great thing is if you company like Sambro, you can react very quickly to something like that. Um, I think there will be a general shift as the, com as the industry moves towards more IT tech based toys. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that come through and I see you know, no change in that going forward. Um, and then the only other thing is the retail landscape, you know, which is quite a significant change, which we should be you know, really focusing on. The rise of the discounters, the Aldis, the Lidls, uh, the B&M, you know, those retailers are now taking a greater share of toy and game sales. And actually the toy specialists are struggling a little bit with that. OK, and what about uh, sort of pos all positive for, th for the future, regardless of Brexit, do you think? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think, you know, we have a massive portfolio of, of properties. We also have multi-countries around the world. So as long as we plan, um, you know, we forecast effectively and also, you know, make sure the stock is sitting in the right place at the right time. You know, we have warehousing in, in a number of European cities, um, as well as holding stock in the Far East. So it's about being flexible. You know, if you're not flexible and you can't adapt to change, you're going to be left behind. OK, Granky, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time at Great British Business.